The world of movies moves at a breakneck pace at times, meaning that inevitably when ideas are being thrown out left, right and centre, some of them are gonna end up having to be scrapped whilst others are just left at the wayside. There are plenty of amazing monsters out there that never got to see the light of day, because maybe time passed, interest waned or the budget ran out. Whatever the reason, trust me, there are some real good ones out there, so let's take a look at a few of them. I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are eight scrapped horror monsters that would have been terrifying. 8. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark The Chimney Man All the way back in 2013, CBS Films obtained the rights to turn Alvin Schwartz's books, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, into films, and thus began the process of turning this sprawling source material into one 108-minute film. Looking at the first book alone, you can find where a few of the good stories came from. However, for all the stories of Schwartz's that they chose to utilise, there also had to be those they ignored, and one that seemed fitting for the film's tone but didn't quite make the cut was the zombie from the story What Do You Come For? In the story, bit by bit, a corpse falls down the chimney and reassembles itself. Long, rotten limbs reattaching at the joints become one great, gangling man who dances around the room before attacking. It seems that in the film, two stories became one so as to use certain parts of each that the filmmakers liked. The fella in question here may have well been blended with the story of Meetai Doty Walker, in order to lend him a body to go with his creepy head. So in a way, this monster appeared in part, but it still would have been great to see him in full. 7. I Am Legend – The Original Dark Seekers. Love it or hate it, I Am Legend has become a somewhat infamous film. The movie's vampiric, zombie-ish monsters are now known as being sort of goofy-looking. CGI has come forward in leaps and bounds since 2007, and their elasticy, plastic-looking faces aren't exactly the peak of visual excellence anymore. In the beginning, though, the monsters looked entirely different, and that's because they were going to be played by actors wearing prosthetics and makeup. This would have lent a more human look to them, reminding us that they were people before they were monsters. Without the goofy CGI and other time-saving, slightly misguided changes, yes, including that ending, the monsters would have been far more impactful in some ways, especially in line with the messaging from the movie's source material novel, having humanised beasts could have been really smart and equally as terrifying. Six. The Conjuring 2 – A Black Horned Demon Believe it or not, most of this film was filmed and edited with the understanding that our central monster would not look like a nun at all. In fact, it would be a big, hulking, jet-black demon. Now, this entry is not to say that the nun look didn't work well, because it was definitely scary in its own way, and also intelligent in its own way, but it is worth giving a little nod to this guy because he is very cool looking. The demon was part inspired by classic iterations of Dracula, and was initially created for a film director James Wan was attached to long ago called Castlevania. There exists a fully animatronic build of this villain, to which they planned to add sprawling CGI wings, but when it came down to it, the beastie just didn't fit right. When it came to the edit process, Wan thought that the whole huge, ugly demon thing just didn't suit the film. He wanted something to feel closer to the central characters, something that personally would challenge the Warrens, and so swerving towards religious imagery made sense. Valak the Nun is unsettling for sure, and absolutely terrifying in her own way, but take one look at this guy and tell me he isn't amazing. You can't. 5. Don't Look Under the Bed – The Boogeyman now, I don't believe that most of us were avid horror watchers as children, and I think that's mostly because our parents were sensible enough to know that sticking Cannibal Holocaust on the telly for a ten-year-old would probably cause lasting damage. This doesn't mean that there isn't a whole subgenre of scary movies aimed directly at children, though, because within reason, kids still love to be scared. Well, it turns out that for a lot of viewers, they pitched this one a little too frightening, and an influx of parent complaints saw Don't Look Under the Bed lose its annual replay status. As scary as it was, it could have been scarier had they not scrapped the initial monster design. This is according to director Kenneth Johnson. He described the initial concept drawings as nightmarish, with huge talons and quills protruding from the monster's body. The serpentine-tongued, dark-toned beast was taken back to the drawing board and revised into something more palatable, considering that maybe lifelong trauma wasn't what they were aiming for here. Honestly, it was probably for the best, because if the monster audiences actually saw was deemed inappropriately scary, then God knows what the reaction to a more terrifying one would have been. 4. Untitled Dream Man Film – This Man a few years ago, we all got caught in a hoax. Anyone who tells you that they saw right through it from the beginning is either lying or cynical to a fault, because it's safe to say that most of us fell for that viral story about a man who seems to appear in everyone's dreams. 
It's widely agreed that this bloke looks like Andrew Lloyd Webber's weird basement-dwelling cousin, and yet somehow the collective insanity convinced thousands of people that they really did know this bloke, and further than that, he'd been frolicking about in their dreams for years. He's unnerving, uncanny, his face is slightly too flat and his eyes are a bit too big, and so when it was revealed that the hoax was done as part of a guerrilla marketing campaign for a new movie by Brian Bertino, known mainly for the hit home invasion horror The Strangers, it sort of made sense. It's a shame then that all these years have passed and we've never really heard anything more about it. The whole campaign drummed up so much intrigue and so much fear at the idea of one troglodyte looking man somehow commanding all of our dreams that it could have made for a really unnerving horror. I think we're safe to assume by now that this idea has long since been scrapped, but we can still dream of seeing its fruition one day. 3. Hellraiser Hellfire – An Alien Monster Invasion when you think of Hellraiser, you usually think of Pinhead and the other Cenobites. The first thing that comes to your mind probably isn't the ancient alien god Leviathan that we're introduced to in Hellbound. Hellfire would have seen this Leviathan monster make a more overt appearance, the treatment of the movie promising the potential of him crossing over onto Earth thanks to a giant occult gateway. The second Hellraiser movie didn't really give us much lore or context around the Leviathan, it kind of just seemed like an ever-present evil force. And whilst it may not look very intimidating in the form we see in Hellbound, it has the power to form Cenobites in any way it wants, to control people and suck up their memories and even capture their souls. Yes, and it does all of that whilst just looking like a big matte black geometric shape. Now, it's hard to find exactly how the Leviathan was going to wreak havoc in Hellfire, but from the capabilities we've seen, we know it would have been terrifying. 2. Prometheus – Fifield's Mutation for Prometheus, two designs and plans were made for Fifield's mutation, one inevitably being scrapped. In the eyes of many viewers, though, the filmmakers scrapped the wrong one. In the final cut of the film, Fifield is found sitting weirdly on the ground, his limbs unnaturally positioned around him. On standing up, we see that his helmet is smashed and that his face is all wrinkly and textured, his head elongated slightly. Yes, he looks weird, but they haven't taken it far enough, so he does kind of look a bit goofy. The deleted version of the scene, however, offers a different take on the mutation, instantly made creepier by the elongated limbs folding around his body whilst he sits, sort of reminiscent of a dead spider when all of its legs curl up. His mouth is hanging agape and one of his eyes is bulging out, white and apparently unseeing. He retains all the strength that he has in the final cut, but everything is executed in a way that just sort of causes a lot more unease because of his lanky proportions. Looking slightly closer to an actual xenomorph, it makes more sense seeing him survive being shot and burned, too. The deleted, mutated Fifield is just overall better. 1. The Fear Street Trilogy – The Humpty Dumpty Killer the Fear Street trilogy was filled with horrifying monsters, murderers, and more, but because they didn't have all the time in the world, they had to skip over and skimp on screen time for some of them. One of these supernaturally revived killers was the so-called Humpty Dumpty Killer, who director Lee Janiak explained was originally scripted for the 1994 section but had to be cut. Reduced only to a headline we briefly see, we find that this egg-inspired killer was active around the 1930s. Janiak reveals that there was a whole backstory planned to support his appearance, and oh boy was it gross. He wasn't named Humpty Dumpty just because he was egg-shaped, although that would have been quite charming, but instead because of the idea of putting him back together again that's cited in the old nursery rhyme. The killer would murder victims and then hack them to pieces, reassembling the various parts from all these different corpses to then make new, remixed, mishmashed humans. All that's missing from this backstory is a Frankenstein-like revival, so he ended up with his own army of collage people. It's a shame that we didn't get to see more of this guy, but if they decide to keep making stuff in this universe, then we could see him in the future. And with that, we've reached the end of this list of eight scrapped horror movie monsters that would have been terrifying. I had a hell of a time finding these, so please let me know if you know of any more good ones in the comments down below. And remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. As always, I've been Amy from Whatculture, and I'll catch you next time.